Yes, on a save. Right, when I last left off, right before I saved, we we're running a little medical supplies. That's cool. Where's John? Oh, he's over there. Oh, when I last saved, there was a letter on my desk that I did not read because I went the fuck to bed. So, we gonna go read that letter. How have you been, Arthur? Okay. You seem well, Reverend? Yes. Well, maybe. I've been okay before, but then... I make a fool of myself again. Yeah, I'm sorry, I don't give a shit. So do I. I forgot to care, Reverend. I went into town. So did I. If I was still a, a religious man, I'd say there are too many Catholics there, but I've, I've given up on all that. Mm. Why are you following me? Me too, Reverend. I met a monk there. Kindly fellow. Took me back to my days in college. Is there any purpose to this conversation, Reverend? Not really, but he said the strangest things about all manner of bad things happening in town. I believe it. Bad things happening in a city. <laughs> Who would have thought it possible? Yes. Well, maybe if you're there, you could have a chat with him. He's hanging about outside the marketplace collecting alms for the poor. Sounds thrilling. Too bad I don't give a shit. <clears throat> Expect his letter. My dear Arthur, I hope this letter finds you well. I wanted to thank you for your help with Jamie. He and Daddy are still arguing, but I understand that Jamie is thinking about going back to college. Whatever happens, I believe you saved his life, and we are all truly grateful. Oh, Arthur. I have made such a mess of my life, time and again. Why can I not change and be the woman I want to be? Why couldn't you change and be a man and put down all those fantasies that shroud your judgment? Fuck you, bitch! Life is very confusing, and I see now that I'm not very good at it. I'm afraid we've got ourselves into another mess. It's not my fault, but I need your help. I'm staying at the Hotel Grand in San Denis. Oh, Arthur. I know it is wrong to ask you. But I have nobody else. And for what we once had together, I beg of you. Even though I am ashamed to do so. You're a piece of shit and I hate you. I'm not helping you again. I'm not doing it. You have my word. I don't give a shit what it is. You're not getting help from me. You stupid bitch. You're dead to me. You got lucky that I helped your brother. Lucky. Starting to think you're taking my kindness as a weakness. Who's there? Hey, Arthur. Come on! If we're gonna make it to this party. We sure as shit better clean up a little. So we're doing this? Oh, yeah. Old friend Dutch Van der Linde's finally showing his true colors. Social climbing. <laughs> Old Senor Bronte, that horrendous snake, has invited us to the ball, Cinderella. So my suggestion is we go and get you a gown. <laughs> you son of a bitch. <laughs> oh, my beard's looking kind of long. <laughs> Utterly. I ain't never been to a ball in my life. Nor have I, if I am being honest. I used to quite often. There could be fine pickets. Oh, no, 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 no pickpocketing. We are here to make real contact. What kind of contact? Well, I don't know. We'll find what we can. All I know for sure is we are going to a party at the mayor's house, and the guest of honor is the worst crook in town. <laughs> I am sure that we will find something. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, this isn't sketchy. Gentlemen, Luca, 
I'm afraid the mayor does not allow guns at official functions after last year's incident. Luca here will take you to Mr. Bronte. I believe he is expecting you. Follow me, gentlemen. Damn, Dutch looking skippy. Thank God Arthur didn't touch him. Gentlemen, Senior Bronte will be so pleased that you made it. We are honored to be. <laughs> That's wonderful, wonderful. That. Come down this way. Uh, what a beautiful evening it shall be. Mr. Brante is a very good friends with the mayor. Good evening, Pierre. Senor Napoli. As long as the mayor behaves himself, you know, Mr. Brante, he has uh, that thing, you know, uh, respect. Jose, well, Bill, you join the party. We'll meet you out back after we pay our respects to Senor Bronte. Gum gum. We'll meet you out in the balcony when you're done. I just fear this is going to end horribly. I really do. You arrived, and you've washed for the prima volta questo mese, senza dubbio. Uh, oh. <laughs> this is quite a party you've invited us to. Yes, quite something, although I'm not quite sure what. <laughs> so, this is San Denis High Society. <clears throat> yes, apparently so. And all these people, these are friends of yours, <laughs> Senor Bronte? No, 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 not quite, not quite. But they certainly are afraid of me. Like that one. See that wretch? He's the mayor. <laughs> Henri Lemieux. <laughs> He'll do anything for a dollar, and I mean anything. <laughs> Politics is a foul business. Yes. Oh, and that one too. That is Alberto Fuzar. He owns a sugar plantation out on the island, and he comes here to whore and despoil himself. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, and that, that is Hobart Crowley, <laughs> a, a Confederate major in the war. I mean, a hero, they say, but that, this is his very young wife. I mean, a young mistress, that's the natural order of things, yes, but a young wife is unseemly. Oh, oh, the Redskins. <laughs> I have no sympathy for them, because whoever is stupid enough to get tricked by the Americans, no, they get what they deserve, huh? <laughs> yes, hand a letter to the mayor. Oh, yeah, that'll save you. <laughs> and that... That is Hector Fellows, mm. this self-righteous newspaper man. Maybe, maybe you will kill him for me one day. <laughs> well, we're not paid killers as such, not in cold blood anyway. I did not know you were so particular that uh, you wouldn't help a friend. Oh, I'm willing to help in any way I can, uh, within reason. <laughs> I'm going to pretend to understand what that means. I meant no offense, sir. I'm not taken. None taken! <laughs> I don't like this guy. All these vulgar people. They hate me. Non vedo l'ora di guardarti morire! Well, uh, it has been wonderful conversing with you, but I can tell that you are very busy and I won't waste any more of your time. Yes, yes, yes. Go, enjoy yourselves and mingle with this vulgar scum. It'll make you long for the days when you could shoot each other and screw cows out on the open range. <laughs> Those sure were the days. Good day, <coughs> gentlemen. Mm, good I hope day Dutt to you. gets to put a bullet between you your go, eyes. What uh, exactly are your plans here? Well, we've not made any. Well, we, we are going to need some money. Money, yes, of course. Well, there's, there's money at the trolley station. They keep a lot of cash there in the day. Now, I could not involve myself in such uh, matters. But you, pfft. As a guest, yes, as my guest, bah, do it, huh? <laughs> okay, good day, gentlemen. Goodbye. <laughs> I don't trust this cocksucker. Not one bit. Okay, ragazzi, adesso il vino buono. I'll show you to the party, gentlemen, if you'll kindly follow me.
Gentlemen, enjoy your evening and welcome once again to Santa Denis. Ciao, ciao. Gentlemen, let's go ingratiate ourselves. Okay. Go find the mayor if you can and stay out of trouble and steal nothing unless it's information. Of course. Jose, you go find us some place to rob. Bill, oh, that's nice. Go make us some new friends. I can find that old cornwall. <clears throat> All right. All right, fuck it, I'll take one. You know? Bill, you motherfucker. How was the show? I heard you went. Pretty sure that's the mayor. No, maybe not. Gentlemen, I hope you're having a fine evening. Ah, Mr. Mayor, wonderful to see you again. Lemieux, <laughs> this intellectual here was just insulting me regarding the Redskin. I did no such thing. <laughs> but, Mr. Lemieux, I suggested that all of us as Americans had a duty to take care of people living in this land. And that extends to Saint Denis. It ain't complex, Lemieux. And only an idiot like you, buddy, would try to make it so. I will not deny idiocy, sir, but perhaps now is not the time. <laughs> Typical pansy! You are drunk, Ferdinand. <laughs> I'm not drunk, you fool. But this man, this man loves darkies. Hey, <laughs> you are pretty drunk. Yeah, what say you and me cool off? Oh, shit. Off me. Come on, sleep it off. Piece of shit. Sit down and calm down. Count to a thousand. Then you can rejoin the pump. Thank you, sir. My pleasure. Henri Lemieux. I hope you're enjoying my party. The mayor. Allegedly. That's quite a place you got here. <laughs> it's not mine, and the city is horribly in debt, but we can still put on a good show. Do you know Evelyn Miller? My lord. The writer? Well, we seem to have another deranged drunkard on our hands. Shall we? Oh, shit, we got fireworks? Oh, oh, oh. Damn! My lord, they're fantastic. Mr. Cornwall was quite insistent, I'm afraid. Uh, he shouted down the telephone for several minutes. Mr. Cornwall is a horse's ass and a bad horse. I'm very sorry, sir. Uh, it's not your fault. I'm a fool for trusting him. I'll come and sign it in a minute. Let me enjoy the fireworks. Of course. Please say something about Cornwall. Yes. Find out what. Sure. Come here, buddy. You got information I won't. No problems? Everything's fine. We have the place well secured. Good. Mr. Bronte has a habit of wandering about and reading whatever he likes. <laughs> We're watching him and his men like hawks. Thank you, Mr. Terrible. Bronte just makes me nervous. I feel like it's going to go south. Is everything taken care of? The telephone, it keeps ringing. The mayor said he will sign later. Uh, 
Marie! Marie! Find that little reprobate Jip and beat him! I will not have standard slip in this house! Oh shit. Have you lost your mind? I said, have you lost your mind? Come here. Come here. Look at me. Look at me. <coughs> Who do you think you are? This area is not meant for the likes of you. You know this. The standards in this house are slipping. This is a final warning to you, miss. A final warning. Now get out of my sight. He's got to be going into that room. <clears throat> they locked it for a reason. Mr. Leviticus Cornwall. Top secret. Extremely confidential. Very interesting. Where did he go in that room? I guess that's possibly walked out the door, but then why did he leave that door locked? Just kind of open it and walk down. It's locked for a reason earlier. Hello there. <clears throat> Find anything? I think so. Nothing. This town is a waste of time. Maybe not. Arthur? Gentlemen, I think we're done here. Good. Let's get out of this fucking clown out? suit. Plenty of money moves through here, of course, and I think I found out how we can grab some of it. Big bank. Real one, I mean. But not yet. A city bank? Maybe. And a stuffed one. If we're gonna leave, that could be the one thing we need. There's also that trolley car station Senor Bronte told us about, and I heard about a high-stakes poker game. Come on. Here comes Lenny. All right. Let's get in. <coughs> Go home! Oh, I ain't never felt so awkward in all my life. All them folk all so pleased with themselves. Oh, high society's pigeon shit. If you ask me, it's more like torture. Well, that's sort of the point, isn't it? Let the people torture themselves. Here's them papers I took. <sighs> Let me see you take this. I don't think so. Hmm. I might have an idea. Let me think on it. Oh, Dutch, you're gonna get us in trouble. Everything we do gets us in fucking trouble. Yes, sir. I tell you what, failure. <laughs> Interesting times. <laughs> I guess. So, what's next? Dancing lessons? Deportment? More along the lines of armed robbery. Jose is handling reconnaissance on the bank. He and Abigail are gonna run some distractions, see how the law react. Good. Oh, and I spoke to Evelyn Miller, fine man, here helping the Indian chief we saw. Yeah, I met him too, with the mayor. He's lobbying officials in San Denis on their behalf. Maybe we could help. Maybe. Now, I think there's a lot of money on the riverboat. A lot of money. And Trelawney, he's investigating for us. He says to meet him at the tailors. Okay. One big score down here, Arthur, and we disappear. We are almost heading home. And where is home? 
I don't know. Exactly. But I can smell it. I'm gonna go investigate this trolley thing old Bronte was talking about. Okay. You do that, Dutch. Awesome. I don't have to walk all the way downstairs. <clears throat> mm, there's a lot of shit for us to do here, ain't there? Oh, I really don't want to talk to Trelawney. And besides, Mary Beth's closer. We can go talk to Mary Beth. I still don't understand why I can't run inside the camp. That just seems foolish. Was there a hot meal prepared? Food? Say, Morgan. Good morning. Morgan, you got any hair pomade? Come on, my turn now, please. Probably. Excuse me? You know, <laughs> hair pomade. No. Well, if you happen to find some. Sure, I'll buy you some hair pomade. I think I have some on my horse. I don't think I have any on me. Good morning, Hello, Arthur. Mary Beth. Oh, how are you, Arthur? Fine. How are you? Um, well, I'm well, I think. It's been quite a run we've had, but, but we're still chewing alive. tobacco. Mm -hmm. So, no regrets. Regrets for what? Well, for joining this band of maniacs. If you're a girl without means in this world, life is very scary. You boys cared for me before no one cared for me. Well, life weren't very nice, Arthur. Not after Mama got typhoid, and that was a long time ago. Sure. What about you? I heard you ran into that Mary girl. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And? You got me thinking how that all ended. Long time ago now. What happened? <laughs> well, she didn't love me enough, I guess. Or I wouldn't change. Huh. Well, she was a fool then, Arthur. Well, she put a lot of good years in on an outlaw. She definitely was a fool. In these books, life seems so simple, but in reality, I, I can't make head nor tail of it. Mr. Morgan! Mr. Morgan, we have a problem. A real problem. It's Tilly. What? She's oh. been taken by them Foreman brothers she used to run with. Come along! The Foreman brothers? What are oh, they shit. doing here? Miss Grinch, I don't know angry. what they've been doing here, but I can tell you what they're going to be doing here. Dying. Sure. Do we need more guns? You and I can handle this, Arthur. God, you're fucking angry. I'll tell you on the way. Just get going. God, Miss Grimshaw's mad. All right, head for Rhodes and quick. She's in Rhodes? No, she's at a place called Bradley's house, just west of there. How do you know? When we first got here, she told me she was worried that our camp was near a safe house that gang she ran with used from time to time. And you told Dutch? No, she spoke to me in confidence. I suppose I didn't think it would be a problem. And now it is. Oh, yes. What do they want with her anyway? I think I saw one of the foremans hassling her in Valentine. Yes, they probably followed us down here. You don't know what happened? She killed one of them, for good reason, but clearly they don't see it that way. Tilly? Yes. Young Tilly Jackson isn't as sweet and innocent as you might think. But, like I say, she was defending herself. She fled and fell in with us right after that. I just hope we can get to her in time. It's not too far. If they've touched a single hair on that girl's head, I will eviscerate the sons of bitches. See? You do care, Miss Grimshaw. Okay, I think that's the place up ahead. I think there's a guard. 
I'll deal with him. Whoa. You're gonna blow his brains out, aren't you? What are you doing? What do you want? Kind sir, we're lost and in need of some help. Well, get out of here. Oh, I see that kindly face of yours, and I know that for the right inducement, a gentleman such as yourself could be mighty kind. Now get out of here. Oh, now you keep saying that. You don't mean nothing by it. I said. You said your last word. Oh, shit, Miss Grimshaw. Get in there and find a girl. Yes, Miss Grimshaw. First door. I'm good. It's okay, Miss Tilly. Now, let's get you out of here. I thought there was. I... Yeah, it don't matter what you thought. It's okay. All right, let's go. Oh, come along, Miss. Thank you, both of you. What happened? It was Anthony Foreman. He thinks he owns me. I remember. Where is he? He went out hunting or something. There were five of them, I think. Well, we killed those fellas there. There they are! Come on! Tilly, grab that gun! Anyone approaches, shoot them! Oh, don't worry, I'll be just fine. Now catch that bastard! Oh, we're going. Horse done bucked you off, fuck face. Alright, you bring that bastard back to Tilly so we can all have a nice little chip. I'm gonna head over You done fucked up, man. People need to learn you're fucking with the wrong game. I have the first idea what you're getting into. I'm Anthony Foreman. Oh, thanks for the introduction, Anthony. Is that Foreman with an A? I want the Undertaker to spell it right. Funny. Watch pal. Go to hell. Funny bastard. <laughs> Who are you running with? She didn't tell you? She didn't tell me nothing. Wow. This rope is cutting into me. Don't feel so good when you're the one tied up, does it? She killed my cow bastard. She killed my goddamn cousin. Oh, don't worry. You'll be seeing him soon enough. What are you gonna do? Shut the hell up. All right, all right. All right. Here's your man. Bring him here. Dump him on the ground here. Oh, you gonna get... I hope she, like, cuts your dick off and feeds it to you. Really do. <clears throat> so he's still alive then? Ah. Yes. You see this girl? You leave her alone. She killed my cousin. Your goddamn cousin had it coming, Anthony Foreman. I don't care if she shot your daddy and cooked your mama for breakfast. She's mine. She ate yours. You know, a friend of mine, he always says, <clears throat> revenge is a fool's game. Now, you want all your boys dead? She had her reasons. We was family, Tilly Jackson. You foreman boys ain't no kind of family I want. Kill him, Arthur! You want that? I want him to go away and tell the remaining of his cousins and the clowns he rides with to leave me alone! Now, you think you can do that, Anthony? Or should I 
Slit your throat and just save us Ooh. all the bother. I'll leave you alone. History is done. History is never done. It's your call, Arthur. But I'd slit his throat. Go on. Finish the bastard off. You know my choice. Yeah, but it's not Tilly's. All right, you. Let's get you home. If it was my choice, you'd be dead. But Tilly, Tilly wants get you to go. Let's move. Yep. Done fucked with the wrong group of people. Most of y'all do for some reason. You just don't learn your damn lessons. I guess I'm gonna go see fucking Trelawney, even though I hate Trelawney. I came here to see Trelawney, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm see Trelawney. Horse don't want to go up steps. Lazy piece of shit. Ah, there you are, dear boy. Yes, here I am. Well, we're going to need to get you smartened up a bit. Why? Well, you can't play at the tables on a Lanahassee riverboat looking like this. Yeah? Not if you want to fit in so well that no one will realize you're there to rob the place. Now, come on. Are we still doing that? Of course. We're going to fix you up so fine no one will notice a thing. Hello. Can I help you, gentlemen? Yes. My friend here is in need of a new <coughs> suit. We are playing on the riverboat this evening. Make this gentleman look like the duke he really is. It was the English's fault his grandfather had to emigrate. A bitter and jealous people. Am I supposed to look or is he just gonna... You can see the aristocrat in his profile. I guess I'm just gonna have to from all pick one out. Inbreeding. Might I suggest the fine three-piece town suit, sir? Perfect for the occasion, I'd say. Do I have to buy it or are you gonna dress me? Something of a hurry here, Arthur. I know, but it's not letting me turn the page. Oh god, son of a bitch. Come on, dear boy, don't be shy. A very good choice, sir. <clears throat> oh, my hair's a little long. Come on, let's get you to the barber. Sure. I cut my hair, but I don't want to touch my bird. Herr Strauss has scoped the whole thing out. It's quite ingenious, actually. What is? The action he has planned. Indeed, it's not much of an action at all. You play cards and win. And you're going to bet very big and flamboyantly while you win. And everyone's going to think you're some new money from the oil fields come to lay it on thick and drunk. All the while, Herr Strauss will be signaling you in your line of sight. When you bust the place, they'll take you upstairs to pay you off. And that is when Javier comes in, and you take whatever you want. You don't think they might see an armed Mexican coming into the safe with me? Sure, they might, but perhaps not. You will see. The suspense is killing me. Oh, don't be so jaded. We both know this is just the kind of innocent fun you thrive on. Uh, well, after the past couple of months, armed robbery don't seem such an innocent pastime. No, but we, you, all of us, will be done here soon. I hope so. Come on! Well, I'm getting a haircut. Oh, shit. I don't want to touch my beard. I don't want it to be long and gorgeous. <clears throat> smarten up, my dear hick friend here. Just call me a hick. I'll gun you down, motherfucker. Fellow has made himself a fortune in the oil fields and learned himself not a lick of manners or gentlemanly deportment. Well, very good, sir. No, it's not good. Not good at all. Not if they're going to let him play big at the tables tonight.
Part of me kind of wants to go with the bald look. Make him look like a prince, sir. Mmm. Mmm. I don't like any of these hairs. Not at all. And, and that that doesn't look bad. We'll roll with that. Oh, see, I can't do that. I just can't. I like the beard. Oh, oh, that's ugly. Oh, it's so hard to choose. I don't want to shave it. I don't want to. I don't wanna. I did not go down. Mm. Ah, I don't like any of this. Son of a bitch. Hmm. I'm gonna roll with this. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. God damn it. I liked my beard, and now it's gone. There, very smart. I do look clean though. I look fresh. I've arranged some transport. Actually, I'm not ready yet. Hold on. Hope you have a successful evening, gentlemen. I want some pomade in that bitch. I want it to be slicked. Looking looking spiffy, Arthur. Should have been looking like this when we went to the fucking party. Dude, get the fuck out of my way. Keeping a gentleman waiting. I don't know. George! To the Grand Corrigan, please. Grand Corrigan, sir. Well, look at you. From Toad, the Prince. Yeah, this is a bit much, ain't it, the coach? We can't grinny up there on horses like a bunch of countrified yokels. You're a brash yokels? Money to buy. Which reminds me, no shuffling and mumbling. Puff your chest out. Get outside yourself. Yeah, all right, all right. This ain't happening. So, who's a mark? You feel all right, by the way, driver? Oh, yes. Don't worry. George and I go way back. It's a man called Desmond Blythe. Made a fortune in hosiery, of all things. <laughs> Likes to play fast and always keep some extra collateral in the safe upstairs. So, if Strauss is sitting behind him, how does he know what cards I got? He won't. But the dealer has recently become a very good friend of mine. Another <coughs> one. Don't worry, Arthur. We're all the authors of our own good fortune. You'll make sure you get the right cards. What could possibly go wrong? Indeed. Oh, fuck. And what money am I playing with? Don't worry. That has all been arranged. Your chips will be... Ah, motherfucker! Ah, there she is. Come Get on. my headset. Okay. Arthur, leave any weaponry here. There are searchers when we get on. 
George. <coughs> these from you later. Very good, sir. Thank you, George. Good luck, sir. I don't want to leave my weapons. I'm naked. Now remember what I said, Arthur. Everyone is the author of his own good fortune. Yes, yes, believe me, I heard every word. Watch Strauss, listen to the dealer, and this should be a very lucky night. There they are. Gentlemen, how wonderful to see you. Arthur, you remember this pair of boys we met in New York? Come on, Captain. Champagne is on dear old Arthur. He's rich as can be and feeling luckier than a turkey that survived Thanksgiving. Hello, gentlemen. Hello, dear boy. Come on, come on, let's head aboard. Drinks on Arthur. Champagne. I'm afraid we require all patrons to hand over their guns. I ain't carrying any guns. Tables await. I'll go find myself a change of clothes. Okay. You seem unsure. Robbing a heavily armed riverboat without a gun tends to bring out the self-doubt in me. These people are virtually idiots. This is simple stuff. I am looking spiffy now, though. Have a good time, but don't lose too much money, or your wife is going to kill me. Whatever you say. Now where can I get? Hmm. I actually like that. We have a chair here with your name on it, sir. Yes, yes you do. Good evening, gentlemen. Arthur Callahan. Sorry I'm late. I had some uh, unfinished business at the bar. Evening. Desmond Blythe. Good evening. Not to worry. Welcome to the game, Mr. Callahan. Okay, gentlemen, let's play. I hope you're a player. Been too many cowards at these tables recently. Nothing less dignified than a man afraid to lose a little money. Look at this! Chips already stacked up, waiting for me. I like this joint already. We aim to please, sir. So, how are we all fared? Some better than others. If we all fared the same in life now, where would the fun be? I assume he's shaking Wait. his head as to fold. Wait, not Desmond Blythe, the hosiery king. I should have brought my other wallet. Not my preferred title, but yes, you should have. <laughs> <laughs> to hell with it. Here we go then. God damn, that's a big fucking pot. Well, Hello, my ladies. Damn it. Mr. Blythe wins with three queens. <laughs> Goodbye, gentlemen. I guess it's just you and me now, friend. Yes, it is. Time to see if you're really the man you seem to think you are. <coughs> Likewise, Mr. Blythe. So, what business are you in, Mr. Callahan? I'm an oil man, for my sins. Funny, I haven't heard of you. Oh, you will. You know, I thought about getting in a hosiery, but I just look better in a suit. I would stick to oil, Mr. Callahan. I don't think you have a future on the stage. You sound just like my wife. Now my cards are pretty damn good, too. Let's up the stakes a little. Call. Okay, Mr. Callahan, I'm all in. Oh, call. I'll call. Interesting. Hey, cowgirls. Get out, motherfucker. Shit. <laughs> Shit. I guess my luck held. Is that you done? Done. Bust. All right, uh, you got something else to play with. Meaning, well, I heard, well, I heard there were some big boys on this boat. Maybe that's not you. No offense. Sit your hillbilly ass down. Excuse you? Why, I got a watch. Look at you. An expensive one. Real fine. Swiss. 
A Reutlinger, no less. It's in the safe upstairs. It's worth more than you. Okay. I trust you. Now play. As you wish. So, you must know Leviticus Cornwall, big oil man like you. Of course, we've crossed paths. I was fortunate enough to tour a little operation of his up in New Hanover. Let's not waste any more time here. All in. Don't worry, sir. Everyone is the author of his own good fortune. Well. All right. Fuck it. Strauss nodded yes. Gained. Hair kings. Very good, but not good enough. Shit. It was a thousand dollars in the pot. Uh -oh. Holy fuck. Yes, you little beauty. Hard lines, Mr. Blythe. Mr. Callahan wins with an ace-high diamond flush. God damn you! No offense. None taken. Well played, sir. Unlucky, Desmond. Now, forgive my lack of discretion, but uh, where might I find this watch? It's upstairs. Shall we go and have a look? Why not? Gentlemen, please, cash these out for me. I, I started last week. Good. Sure. Perhaps you could escort us up to the office. Yes, of course, sir. Thank you. Follow me, gentlemen. Oh, Mr. Follow Javier me, Escuela. You're having quite the night. Yeah, so far. I cannot believe someone gave a greaser a job. <laughs> That's my good we friend, sir. Times. Personally, I wouldn't trust one with a gun, but fear not. I've got my own little lawgiver right here. Very good. Next, we'll be hiring Negroes. Yeah, I know, I know. I think you're going to like this watch, sir. I saw it earlier, and it really is a handsome piece. Foreign made, but you can't have everything. Indeed. Well. Here we are. Mm. Music does make me a little uncomfortable. Just give me one second, sir. Of course, take your time. <laughs> Don't reach for that gun. Take his gun, Arthur. This is mine, motherfucker. I guess you were right. Only an idiot would give a greaser a gun. <laughs> idiot, huh? Shit, let's hope no one heard that. Quick, clear the safe, let's get out of here. How is nobody gonna hear a gunshot? You in here is looking pretty good. How much is there? Must be a few thousand plus the watch. Nice. Now let's get out of here, come on. Let's go meet the mm -hmm. others. Sure. I reckon we've only got a few minutes to get out of here. If we're lucky. Is that a gunshot? It sounded like one. Come on. Hey, fellas. And how exactly are we getting out of here? I ain't too sure. This is what tends to happen when you leave Trelawney in charge of planet. Oh, garnish no meat. Probably involve us dressing up as dancing girls, can cannon off the side. Nice uniform, by the way. Thanks. I give anyone a job these days. Anyway, we shouldn't give ourselves away until we know we need to. Maybe we could still blend into the crowd when it all goes crazy. Which it surely will. To the bar, senor! <laughs> I hope you had fun, sir. <laughs> In the time of my life. You boys sure know how to put on a show. <laughs> That's wonderful. Ah, <laughs> uh, look, there's your friend. Oh, no, you cheat, and I beg you to take back the insinuation. There he is. Now, don't be a sore loser, friend. There's something I don't like about the 
pair of you. There's plenty I don't like about you, but I have the good manners to keep my mouth shut. There he is! Shoot that man! <laughs> Fuck, this escalated quickly. Oh, right over your face. Holy shit. Why can't we ever do anything silently? Why does everything just gotta go silent? Does Trelawney have a gun? Is he helping us? No, he's not. At least we can swim in this game. Couldn't swim in the last Red Dead. That's a terrible escape plan. Was you gonna swim to shore? Oh, Trelawney, you fucking dumbass. Well, never a dull moment. Yeah, that's one way of putting it. So, how much did we get? A few thousand, I think. Pretty good. Yes, indeed. And this watch, uh, apparently it's worth a bunch of Swiss, uh, a Reutlinger or something. Nice watch. Yes, it's a Reutlinger, all right. <laughs> we'll give it back then. All right, come on, let's <laughs> get out of here. We'll give it back then. My watch now, Mr. Hey, Christian, you recording this? Yeah, I am. Oh. All right, well, fuck off.